and present desktop. There we go. Well, it's good you're winding down then because nobody's going to. I think everybody's about ready to quit. <laughs> All righty. So, scientific notation. Now, I'll go ahead and tell you right now, I teach this a little bit different. And there's three parts of scientific notation. There's writing a big number as scientific notation. There's writing a small number as scientific notation. And then there's operations with scientific notation. And 90% of the students that I've taught don't have a problem with the first two, but they have a problem with the third one. So. When I show you scientific notation, I realize that 90% of y'all know how to do the first two parts. This is the third part that everybody has a problem with. So, with that, first of all, what is the definition of scientific notation? The definition of scientific notation. is placing, this is a Hubertism definition, placing the decimal to the right of the first number greater than zero. That's the definition of scientific notation. Well, like I said, there's three parts of scientific notation. The first part is taking a big number, 242 million, and writing it as a write, writing of scientific notation. Now, first of all, a whole number, the decimal is always to the right of the last digit. So right there is the decimal on a whole number. Now, if you read the definition of scientific notation, it says placing the decimal to the right of the first number greater than zero. Which way do we read? All of us read from left to right. So the first number that's greater than zero is right here. So therefore, we want to put the decimal right there. So you move it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you rewrite it. 2.42 times 10 to the blank. Eight power. Now the reason I put that blank there is because 99% of you will get the 8 correct, but you'll get the sign wrong. And this is very, this is most, the error is most defined in the third part when you are doing um, operations and you get an answer that is not in scientific notation, you have to move it. And that's when people really sign on. So then I tell my students to ask themselves a simple question mentally. Now, what does mentally mean? Let's go over mentally. Yeah. To yourself. Because I don't want anybody to say, you got to move it twice. Mentally. Ask yourself, which way do I move the decimal to get original form? And the original form is right here. So you ask yourself, which way do I move this decimal right here 
to get the original form. If I had to move it, I have to move it where? To the right. To the right is positive. And that's how you do scientific notation. You don't remember any pattern. You don't remember that if it's small, you go this way, and it's right, and it's big, you go that way. Because if you get to an operation and you have to move the decimal, then you're going to get confused. So let's do a small one, and that's the second one. Point zero 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 three one four. Now, right now, the decimal on the decimal on the decimal number is right here. We all read from left to what? Right. So, where is the first number greater than zero? It's the three, so the decimal needs to be like there. Simple as that. So we got to move the decimal. One, two, three, four, five. Three point one four times ten to the point fifth power. And which way do we move this decimal in our head to get it back the way it was? To the left. Left is negative. So 3.14 times 10 to the negative fifth power. And that's the two parts of scientific notation that most most of y'all get it right. There's no problem with getting those right. Okay? It's the third. way that gets people messed up. And I'll just give you a couple of examples. And usually you're going to see division and multiplication a good bit. That's the ones you're usually going to see. Uh, you might see a couple of adding and subtracting, but all you got to remember there is you can't add or subtract scientific notation unless they're very similar, but they'll be about the same. Um, I'll go over that later, okay? Because these are the ones most of them see. So let's go with 15 times 10 to the fifth times 3 times 10 to the negative 4. Now this is a type problem you will see on a standardized test. Now you may see one or two, and the reason I talk about standardized tests is some of y'all have to take standardized tests, you know, get into certain programs or whatever, and that's why I say that, but other than the standardized tests or science, you're not going to see this again, but you're going to multiply the first two, and then you're going to remember your exponential laws for the 10 because it's the same what? What do they have in common? Same base. Okay, 10. So you're going to add the exponents on the 10 and then you're going to multiply the 15 and the 3. Now everybody in here can multiply 15 and 3 in their head. That's 45, right? And you go 45 times 10 so the 5 plus a negative 4, and that's 45 times 10 to the what? 5 minus 4 is 1. And then you say, hot dog, I'm done. No, you're not. Why? Because that's not the scientific notation. The decimal is right there, and you have to move the square. Right there, because you read from left to right, the first number greater than zero is four. So you've got to move it one place, and that gives you 4.5 times 10 to the 1 blank 1. Which way do you have to move this decimal to get back the way it was? To the right 
So your answer is 4.5 times 10 to the seventh power. And that's where students get it wrong. And that's how you do it. Because they get to this point. There's two things that happen right here. One, or A, they forget that it's not in what? It's not in scientific notation. Oops. Let me use that color and it's already changed over to that color. Supposed to be a race. They forget that it's not in scientific notation. So that's one thing that happens on the test. Second thing that happens on the test is they move the decimal, but they move the decimal, they use the wrong sign. And they get, instead of two, they get what? Zero. That's the two most common mistakes that happens on this type of problem. They forget that it's not scientific notation in this form. And then they also, when they do change it, if they remember that, then they use the wrong sign and they make this a negative, which makes this zero and it's wrong. And that's the multiplication problem. Division problem would be something like Mm, 75 times 10 to the 15th power divided by 3 times 10 to the 8th power. All right, try that one. Really? Hold on a minute. Mute your uh, microphone, Ms. Clark, please. All right. So we got 75 times 10 to the 15th power and 3 times 10 to the 8th power. So you're multiplying 75, I don't even know, trillion? I don't even know how many that is. Over 3 times 10 to the 8th would be like 30 million. So you're doing BA numbers. But you don't have to use the other. This is a story I tell whenever I do scientific notation. I gave a problem like this. I think the first problem. No, I gave a problem. Yeah, it was about like this. And the girl, I was walking around the room, and she was doing it on paper. And you know what she did? She changed both of them to their big numbers with zeros, and she was sitting there multiplying them. And she was about that far down with multiplying. Now, honestly, do you think that I would give you a problem to do and you would do it like that? She missed the boat and the train. She missed the whole kit the of what we were trying to do. And that is trying to simplify what? Simplify your operations instead of write them out. <laughs> You know how many zeros that is? That's a lot of zeros. And she was just she was just going to it. She just had 15 zeros across here and she's multiplying X's all over the place. And 
75 divided by 3 is 25, and 15 minus 8. And that would be 25 times 10 to the what? What's 15 minus 8? 7, right? And this is not in scientific notation. Right now, the way it's sitting, the decimal is right there. We need to move it to here. So that's one space. So that's going to be 2.5 times 10 to the 7, blank 1. Mentally, we need to move this decimal to the right to get it back the way it was. So 2.5 times 10 to the 8th power. And what you just did, you just did 75, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and you divided it by 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 7, 8, so that means I got it between my commas. Three hundred newtons, and of course you can easily do this. Take two of them out, but that still would give you take these two out. But you're still taking what? Seventy-five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You're still taking 750 million and dividing it by three. Something like that. So, how about one more? Let's take. Uh, Let's take I'm trying to think. One point five times ten to the six. Over six times ten to the negative eight. All right, do that. Now, when I give one like this on the test, or when I give one like this on classroom problem, I have people reaching for the reaching for their uh, calculators to divide 1.5 divided by 6. But when I ask them what's a dollar fifty divided by 6, they tell me it's 6 quarters. Or 6 quarters, they do it in their head.
Yeah, just come on in. How was Waffle House? Was you able to get get good Do breakfast not in? Eat at Waffle House. Huh? Do not eat the Oh, they don't, they don't wash their dishes. Oh, that's the only problem they got. I ain't got no problem with that. I've eaten off worse. You really haven't had food until you've had sand in it. That's when you really get to... Was that when you were in the desert? In the desert, yeah. That desert over yonder, gives, so the, the, the sand is so fine... That you can put stuff in sandwich bags and it still gets in. <laughs> it's good teeth cleaning. <laughs> so, how many quarters? Or in a dollar fifty. Six. So that's point two five times ten to the six minus a negative eight. Now the number one mistake students make here is they screw up the signs. Not screw up the signs on the scientific notation. They screw up the signs with what? The quotient rule. So the number one error that students make here is not scientific notation, but the quotient rule. And they screw up because they think that, oh, it's subtraction. There's always, there's already a subtraction symbol in front of the eight, so I don't have to do it. I get six minus eight, which is going to be two. And that's what they do. That's the number one error. And then you have not changing it to the right scientific notation and screwing that in. So 0.25 times 10, 6 plus 8 is 14. Right now the decimal is right here. Where does it need to be? It needs to be right there. So in one place. So we've got 2.5 times 10 to the 14 blank 1. Which way do we move this decimal right here in our heads to get it back the way it was? To the left. And that's 2.5 times 10 to the 13th power. That's where students mess up. They mess up three different ways. Especially with the quotient rule, because the quotient rule, you have that subtraction in there, and then you have a sign, and that's where students really mess it up. Then they get to here, and they think this is the answer, and it's not. And then the ones that do remember, they screw this up. They don't screw up the one, they screw up the sign. And they get to the 15th power instead of the 14th. Or 13. And you can put it in your calculator and check it out. This is right. And that's how you do scientific notation. It's not that complicated. How many of you have ever had trouble with scientific notation? Anybody? Well, hopefully that'll help you out. We'll do a couple more. I don't know what kind of homework problems they got, but we'll look at them. Let's see, what section is this? 3B? This is not the homework. This is... This is the study plan. That's where the homework comes from. I'll pick out problems that I would give you on the test. As soon as we get to them. Okay, the earth is about blah, blah, blah. The nearest star beside the sun, blah, blah, blah. No. Okay. 
Yeah. Okay, standardized test. In my test, you just get one like this. You might get one like this, one. Or you might get one like that. So make sure you can do one like that or you go from scientific notation to a regular number or you go from a regular number to what? Make sure you can do at least two of those because I usually try to give those two on the test. That'll give you a bunch. There's one, but that's not. You might see one of these or one of the divisions on the test, but I'm prone to give word problems on the scientific notation because that's what you're going to see in the science classes as soon as I find some. Okay, I guess we're going to get to it eventually. I hate this book. I'm already past. I ain't found any of it. Well, there we go. Okay, try that one. A country's people. Does that sound right? Consume 6.7 billion pounds of candy per year. Express the quantity in terms of pounds per month, pounds per person per month. This is a unit conversion. We ain't covered that yet. See why I hate this book. They don't even go, they don't even give you any decent questions. They give you, they go for, they go jump from one bucket to the other. I have to go to another book to get questions. two questions I might put on the test. Let's do these two. Because I, I, I wouldn't mind putting one of those on the test. Try that one. <coughs> if I can find them in that damn book, I have to make them up. Two million times two hundred and eighty thousand. Time you bring Pringles, you got to bring Pringles for everybody. Well, this is one person who don't complain about food, <laughs> especially the free time. I'm not one of those people. Uh, where'd you get them? Where'd you get the biscuits? Where'd you get them? What kind? That's why I quit buying food for people. I used to buy for the whole class. Yeah. If you got all them problems, then don't eat the damn things.
I actually had one student say, I don't eat biscuits anywhere from Chick-fil-A. I said, well, then you ain't going to eat these. <laughs> Personally, I think Chick-fil-A is overrated myself. Oh yeah, I stack great service. I agree with that. I will not eat. I've never eaten. Them. I mean, it's not bad. It's just forever. My my son and daughter love it, but I will not take it. Anymore. They just have all the time Well, when they do it with the eggs, they do. I think Chick fil A has a lot to do with status more than does with food. Exactly. Not in LA. Because they don't want to get robbed. And they don't want kids running around in their diapers. Well, I'm trying to be nice with the diapers. But I'm trying to. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I agree. Well, I know I wouldn't go there if it was down here. I wouldn't. Let's see, I can go to Bojangles and get a chicken biscuit for less than I can go to Chick fil A and get a chicken biscuit? Yeah, I'm going to Bojangles. Personally, I'd rather go to Hardy's for anything. Hardy, Hardy's knows how to make a hamburger. Period. There ain't nobody that can, unless you go to somewhere like Texas Roadhouse or Outback, that's about the only place it can be Hardy's. Now, nine. Two million divided by. 280,000. And that decimal is right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Why'd you get divided? I'm sorry. The drugs that I'm on. And then I mixed it with Jack and Coke this morning. I'm sorry. That's, that was my waffle. Okay, I have to tell everybody that I'm joking. Oh, somebody will say, he can drink. Two point zero times ten to the six times 2.8 times 10 to the fifth. Now, what is 2.8 times 2? 5.6 times 10. And what's 6 plus 5? Now, see, that one was not a problem because 5.6 is inside this composition. So that would be a type question. So right now, the three type questions that I would put on the test if I can find them in this freaking book is the conversion, one of each conversion, and then one of a multiplication or, and a division or, or a division, which the next one will probably be division. <coughs> or, there's a division right there. Try that one. And I don't know.
know how many of you have the book. Let's see if they have some of these. I doubt it does. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's not enough. I'll see if I can put a worksheet together with all the type problems that I would put on the test. To, could you go ahead and knock these three zeros out? Yep, you could. And you could do 1.5 times 10 to the third over 5.0 times 10 to the what? First. And 515 divided by 5 is what? That'd be 0.3 or 3? 0.3. Times 10. 3 minus 1 is? Okay, this one's not in scientific notation. So we've got to move it. Got to move it from there to there. So that's going to be 3.0 times 10 to the 2 blank 1. Which way do I move this decimal in my head to get it back to where it was? To the left. So your final answer is 3.0 times 10 to the first, or since that's a regular number, what is 3.0 times 10 to the first? And usually, if you have an answer that's to the first or to the second, the directions will tell you to write it as a regular number most of the time. Because it is a word problem, and nobody walks up to you and says, I would like 1.5 times 10 to the first, blah, blah, blah. You know, they're going, I want 15 or I want 30. So there's applications. Let's see, that one it just says use scientific notation, so they, they want the answer in scientific notation. Something else that they usually do is they don't use the times, see where that times is right there? They use the asterisk, which is shift eight. So make that note also. I eventually see this going away one day because now everybody uses the asterisk. Okay. So now you've got four type questions that you know will be on the test. Now let's get to the word problems. Now that we've got a decent book to pull out of. Now here's a good question. Let me get rid of this. Huh? Yeah, at least this one uses correct grammar. In June 2010, the population of a large country was about 3.309.2 million people, and the population of the world is 6.43 billion. Determine the ratio of the country's population to the world's population, and it tells you what to do by dividing the country's population by the world's population. Write your answer in decimal numbers and round to the nearest thousand. All right? Go to it. If you can't do it, then you're a failure. <laughs> Oops. 
I think that's pretty much what we're doing. Correct? Now again, you could knock out three zeros right here and do it a little bit easier, but I don't think it's going to help you. Yeah, you can knock off five. Still going to give you a yucky number. And you're going to have to use a calculator on it, so however you want to do it, it's up to with me. But I'm going to do it like they want you to do it. So that's going to be 3.092 times 10 to the blank. And we'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And it'll be positive. Over 6.43 times 10 to the blank. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oops, it's going to be a positive nine. And that's going to do this in the calculator. Somebody give me that to five digits, please. Point what? And what's 8 minus 9? And then that means we need to, if we need to enforce that, we're going to move this. So that's going to be 048087. And they said round to the thousandth, right? 
5% of the population. Point four eight. Now that's a test question. That could be a test question if I could find one, put on the test. There's a good one. The reason this one's a good one is because of scientific notation, but it also has a very applicable formula with it. Very applicable. In other words, one that you should write down and remember. The distance from a planet to its moon is approximately 289,000 miles. Draw a picture if you need to. If a spacecraft travels at 20,000 miles per hour, how many hours would the spacecraft need to travel from the planet to the moon? Now you can do this same type problem with going from Anderson to Greenville and you're driving 65 miles an hour or you're driving 60 miles an hour and it's 30 miles to, or 60 miles to Greenville. How long will it take you? If you're traveling 60 miles an hour. You ever seen the video with the blonde trying to figure it out? I think I showed y'all, some of y'all said me before. Don't watch it, it's very painful. She couldn't figure out if you're going 60 miles an hour, how long would it take you to drive 60 miles? And it took her about but she, she still didn't get it. You have to watch it. You about ready to give up? Me and my son watched Life last night. It's pretty good, but it's not a horror movie. I don't know why they put a horror thing on it. It's not horror. It's more science fiction. It's called Life. About this space station that's, that's taken over by an organism. No, I'd like Eddie Murphy. I don't like Martin Lawrence. I like Eddie Murphy, though. Yeah, I've watched too many horror movies on my, on my fire stick. Now I'm watching the ones that are just totally stupid. I've watched all the good ones. Now the ones that I'm watching are just totally stupid. I believe some of them are written by people that are on drugs. I really do. There's this one called Boo Boo. It's about stupid. 
And I hate these movies where one person is filming the other one with a video cam. I can't stand those. <laughs> That's what Boo do. This girl goes out to California because she was dating this man and the man was married and she didn't know it. And the wife was a voodoo priestess or whatever. And the voodoo priestess follows her to California. Really? And really stupid. I was bored, okay? <laughs> well, I tell you, I've watched a lot of them. I don't know. Yeah. All right, so we're going to take distance equals rate times time. And it's asking for how many hours. So that means we solve it for time. Time is equal to distance divided by r. So that's what we're going to use. Because right here is asking for time. So t is equal to d over r. So our distance is 289 what? 289,000 divided by 20,000. And if you wanted to, you can go ahead and knock these two out. That would be T is equal to 280, well, 289 over 20. And that would be 2.89 times 10 to the second over 2.0 times 10 to the first. And I believe we could really do 2.89 divided by 2. I believe we could do that. 2.445? Oh. Oh, 1.445, sorry. 1.445 times 10 to the what? First power, and that would be 14.45, whatever they're asking for. Is it hours? Yeah. So it takes 15 hours to go to the moon. Is that about right? Like this. Tell the work the moon moving on where you're going. Oh, it says a planet, so that leaves out Earth. Okay, so could be Earth. All right, that's a good test question. All right, now this is a unit conversion. We can do this one. I'll show you how to do unit conversions while we're doing it. But a large waterfall is managed so that a minimum of 150,000 cubic feet of water per second flows over the falls. Find the, my, find the minimum amount of water that will flow over the falls in a 24-hour period. So I'm going to let you work on that. And then I'm going to set it up in a unit conversion problem. They don't call it unit conversions in your book. They call it comparing something, something, something. Stack people are still here. Just checking. Sometimes it kicks y'all out.
Those of y'all that came in late, this is going to be the last section we're going to cover. So your test on Unit 4 will cover Chapter 3A and 3B. 3A and 3B. And then that's it. So what I'll do is I'll post the last test, and it'll be due on the last day of finals. And then your final exam, I'll post it, and it'll be due on the last day of finals. So that means next week and the next week, you don't have to what? You don't have to come to class. Okay? We're through after Wednesday. So whoever's going to complain about it, go ahead and complain today so I can... This was kind of funny. He's, he didn't cover all of them before. The first thing you got to do is whenever you start a unit conversion, always put the number that you're trying to convert over one. Now, in this case, they give you right here, they tell you to put it over one. So, 150,000 <coughs> cubic feet over. One what? Okay, now they want you to find find the minimum amount of water that will flow over the falls in a 24 hour period in one day. So that means we got to get rid of seconds. And we got to turn seconds into what? Days. Okay? So that means we got to put seconds on top so we can cancel them out diagonally, right? So how many seconds are in a minute? There's 60 seconds in one minute. You gotta change minutes into what? Hours. Sixty minutes in a what? One hour. And how many hours in a day? Take the handy dandy virtual red marker. Cancel the hours. Cancel the minutes. Cancel the seconds. And what do you have? Cubic feet per what? Day. So now all you got to do is the math. So you take the handy dandy black marker. And you do 1.5 times 10 to the sixth, uh, fifth times. 6.0 times 10 to the first. No coughing in class. 6.0 times 10 to the first. And 2.4 times 10 to the first. So what's 5 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1? Hey, Hubert, thank you, class. <laughs> 1.5 times 6 times 6 times 2.4. Now, we know that 6 times 6 is 36. So we could take 1 times 36. That would be 36. And half of 36 is 18. 18, 36 is 54. Somebody help me out there. Now we can do 54 times 2. 54 times 2 is 108. Keep 108 in your head. And then 0.54 times 4, 2.16. So that'd be 110.16. Somebody check my math. Okay, hold on. I did something wrong. 129.6 times 10 to the 8. Oh, look over here. 
We don't have scientific notation. So we'll quit, right? One, two, one point two nine six times ten to the eighth blank two. And which way do we move this decimal to get back the way it was? To the right. So one point two nine six times ten to the tenth power. Um, I know what I did wrong. I know what I did wrong. So let's check it. What does it say punch it into? Scientific notation. So that would be 1.296, shift 8, 10, lift up to the 8th or 10th power. We feel good about ourselves. These are all questions that are science related, and that's why I'm showing them to you. If nothing else, you'll see them somewhere. All right, this one says, uh, in a cubic millimeter of blood, if a cubic millimeter of blood contains 5,900,000 red blood cells, how many red blood cells are contained in 60? So you're just going to that's a basic multiplication problem. Times six, fifty-seven point four. Yeah. No, I'm off today. What did you say? Yeah. I didn't hear you. They were in the Bible of the hippie counter culture. Oh my God, that's one thing I can't stand is hippies. So TCP is adding. The hippie spirit is something we can read and make them. Are they confusing that with the protests that they're doing? I don't know, but there's two things that I can't stand is hippies and populists. I can't stand one of them. We used to walk through the dark hall west side and knock them down. I see a post on Facebook and I tried to follow the link. It was posted in WYSF4. Oh, God. I couldn't follow the link to see if it was a real article. It wouldn't know. But it said they're going to have a video to offer free check. Oh, I see. And I thought about what you said about nothing being free. I was like, oh, God, I don't think it's you know what the catch is? 
your paycheck, your paycheck, your paycheck, your paycheck, your paycheck. Everybody has to pay for it. Probably. Yes, ma'am. I'll see you after class. We'll figure it out. Okay. All right. That'll be fine. Is that just at the Anderson campus or? All right. Well, we don't offer nothing, do we? No, I want to take the trash out, but that's only offered at Colton, and then they want you to go Monday through Friday at 8 a.m. Or astronomy. Well, I can understand maybe because of the labs is the only reason I can understand it. Because the labs have to meet. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. Listen, I'm having problems getting anything offered here in math, much less science. Okay. Huh? In the fall, yes. No, don't do that over the summer. I will. Right. We'll talk about it. All right. Okay. I can't believe you're not offering. Oh. Yeah, I can. But yes, whenever a politician says free, that means taxes are going to go up. So whatever you pay on out of your check, that's going to go. That's going to come out. More is going to come out. And it's even better than that. When a politician says free, he's going to make money. Yeah. Money. Through a lobbyist or something. Yeah. Yep. Six point oh times. Sorry. Times six point zero times ten to the first. I went ahead and changed that one because that one's easy. This would be 5.9 times 10 to the 6th, 6.0 times 10 to the 1st, and that's going to be 10 to the 7th times, what did you say it was, 75? 35, 35, 35, 4. Is that it? And then change that one, that would be 3.54. Times 10 to the 7th point 1. Move that to the right. So 3.54 times 10 to the 8th power. So as you can see, scientific notation is not that difficult. What makes the part is in biology. Mm -hmm. King Henry died drinking chocolate milk. Is that really? Is that? Yeah. Yeah. We go over that Wednesday. Okay. All right. I need to shut it off because those people are going to break down the door. They they all get in here. They must be real interested in there. <laughs> Well, they break down the freaking door. All right, Skype people. See y'all later. I'm going to say everybody was here today.